In the time it takes to score a goal, you can also lose control. Don't speed, drive smart. Michael Stewart, what's happening? Right side. How are you mate, alright? Good thank you, how are you? Good, I need to say it's an <coughs> absolute stupendous vehicle. Thanks very much. What is it we're driving? It's a Panamera. Wow. A Porsche Panamera. Don't get much change back off of 50 G's for this young man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're just going to sit here for a bit. Good. Talk about your time ahead, but before I need to put my cards on the table, I was a bit nervous, didn't I? How? Guys, I usually interview. Thick as shit. <laughs> I was a bit worried that you're going to have me looking like Gaz and Deeks by the end of this. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you my, how, uh, how good my vocabulary is. Right. Great to see the gentrification of Leith in recent oh, times, uh -huh. isn't it? Yeah, certainly been gentrified this stadium, that's for sure. A lot changed since you know were not in Leith, though. I don't know that. No, technically this isn't Leith. So what, where is this? This is outside of Leith. Right, okay. Uh -huh. So what's changed for when you were here? Um, just the the far side, the the, the, new the new stand over there. Everything else is pretty much exactly as it was when I was when I was here. Uh, you remember driving up Peter Sign for Hibs? Um, no, not really. But I can remember when uh, when I first went to speak. It was Tony Morby was the manager, right? And I remember going to meet him at um, at Mark Venus's house at the. The West uh, Wester Coats, just next to the old uh, Donaldson Deaf School, went to meet them for the first time, and I was I was not sure. I was apprehensive. Why not? Just because I was at, you know I'd been on loan at Hearts. I was a Hearts fan. All my family were Hearts supporters. So inevitably, you're a little bit like I don't know. I, I don't know about it. But then I thought, you know what? I want to just go and enjoy playing football because mm. up until that point, it had just been like crap. Had been, you know, losing the the, the love for the game. Well, you, well, even that young stage, you were losing aye, the love for the game, were you? Aye, right? Because you know, you're, the the football that was being played or that I was getting, you know, involved in was just it was it was murder. And what was that down to manager? Aye, pretty much. And the fact that obviously, you know, going from like United and then dropping down, it was just getting to the stage where I wanted to come back to Edinburgh, which I did with Hearts. I didn't want to leave Edinburgh, but I wanted to enjoy playing football again. And Tony Mowbray was. Had been in the job for a year at Hibs, and they played great football. Yeah. You know, just entertaining. So I, I thought, you know what? Why don't I just go and speak to them? I think Mowbray kind of changed the style up in, in Scotland. Do you agree? <clears throat> well, he certainly did it. Uh, you know, I think Hibs have had a, a reputation historically as a team that want to play football. So there was, it was a good fit, yeah. even though I don't think anybody really knew or what, what to expect with with Mogger. Um, but he certainly moved on. You know, Hibs as a club at that stage dramatically mm. and, you know, and he, he obviously was fortunate that he, he had a group of youngsters that were coming through at that time but you need to have that mix between the youngsters the experience but also a manager that knows how to get the best out of them what about uh, Vino Vino's having him selling it <laughs> he is having him selling it he's not assisting it selling it oh was it oh, of <laughs> course right, yeah. not for me not for me <laughs> lovely life put it away. yeah yeah tell you he should have still been playing for Played. England <laughs> <That's> <laughs> mean. by the way I noticed Booster seat, is that for uh, Johnny Sunderland? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I don't know if Johnny <laughs> Sunderland would be big enough for that one. <laughs> uh, you said, obviously, you were at Hearts before. Yeah. Was that a frosty reception for the fans here? Um, I can't... No, do you know what? I don't know whether it's just me being oblivious to things or, you know, a bit of revisionism looking back and uh, thinking everything was all right. I don't... Nah, not that I can remember, to be nah. perfectly honest. Nah. What about for your own pals? There was a wee bit, obviously, for your mates. You know, it's like just a bit of banter. But mm -hmm. after a while, it was like you know, you just you, you know that you know what it's like. The classic thing is you can't react. Yeah. You know, as soon as you react, boys are on you. Yeah, so yeah, as soon yeah. as your mates are giving you a bit, you've just got to take it. You know. <laughs> uh, you played centre mid with Scott Brown. Uh, did you think back then that he'd gone and have the career that he did? Full of energy. Well, well, do you know what? I mean, it's it's difficult to to know. You know, what, what sort of career fuck we're going to have. Looking at him, you're thinking to yourself. He's capable. There's no doubt, you know, because he was pure energy. Um, he just had a, you know, a will to win, and he had a healthy disregard for reputations as well. So he was never going to be, you know, in awe of folk that he was playing against. Were you similar to that? No. Do you know what? No, I probably wasn't. He? I, I probably wasn't, or maybe I was when I was when I was younger. But then. You know, I'd imagine. I mean, I don't know what your character's like, but you know, Terrible in terms character. of, <laughs> but in terms of, you know, you you were at a big club as a kid, and then once you leave there, 
you know, psychologically, it's, 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 it's a tough one. Yeah. So I think that probably altered it a little bit for me. And that was why I came home. I just wanted to, I wanted to get a, a split away from football so that I had a life away from football, um, which in the grand scheme of things was the best thing I've ever done. But for my football, it was the, it was the worst thing I could have ever done. Um, so probably when I was younger, I was like that, but not when I came back up the road. Why do you think you never... Because everyone I speak to that played, you said you were a good player, right good player. So why do you think you never played at the top, very top for a longer time? <clears throat> um, oh, I mean, look, there's, there's a, you know, a multitude of reasons. Um, time at United, probably just the timing, you know. A couple of years younger, opportunities there. Difficult to break into a team that's, you know, the best midfield in the world. Mm. Um, when I signed my first team contract at United, it was... The gaffer was, I don't know if you remember, he was, he was going to retire yeah. early on. Mm-hmm. And that was him basically always building three, four years in advance. So myself, John O'Shea, Luke Chadwick, Wes Brown, we all signed like four-year contracts. So that was him obviously putting you know, the, the foundations in place for the next phase. But the problem was that the year that he was going to retire, he signed Juan Sebastian Veron. So it was almost like he's Robin Van Persie back then. Yeah. And it just meant that I was going to be limited. I remember the start of that season, sitting on the bench, the Champions League qualifier against the Hungarian team, Zalagers Egg, and Scholes is on the bench. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> like, up, isn't it? I'm thinking, like, you know, like, this is going to be tough. And I'd, obviously, I'd made my debut in that before. And, the, you know, once you've made your debut, you've got to keep progressing. When you, and when you hit a bit of a, a lull or a, a bit of a, a plateau, it's difficult to get it going again. Especially at a club like that. Right. Uh-huh. Um, Four year deal for for this, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, I need to ask you as well. Obviously, as I said, clever guy. I like listening. I actually do. I, I, I'm not bullshitting you. I genuinely do like listening because I think, how do, how's he so clever, man? And played football. But <laughs> how does a conversation go between Michael Stewart, Derek Reardon, and Gary O'Connor? Come on, come on. <laughs> Did I like, you struggle. Uh, do you know, I, I like to try and think I'm a bit of a chameleon. I can, you know, flip between different groups. And they're not, like, you know, the, the fact is, when you're talking about football, these guys are clever. Yeah. They know fo- they know football. Oh, definitely. You know, have. Aye. So, like, I'm not going to sit down and talk to them about economics and hell like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so know your audience. Uh-huh. Um, so, that, that, they're you know they're two good people. Yeah. You know, fundamentally, and you're in a football environment, so you, you get on absolutely fine with them. Was it a good laugh back then? with the young boys in the team together? Aye, I mean, aye, there's no doubt that it was a it was an enjoyable team to be involved in. Not just in terms of like, on the park because there were good players, but off it as well because there was a you know there was a lot of good characters um, in that in that changing room. Would you be one for nights out? Um, aye, but not like you know not mental. Okay, I mean, I yeah, lived yeah. in the, the city centre in Edinburgh for like fifteen years, um, and I was I, I was out. I mean, that was one of the things that I enjoyed being back home was just be like socialising, yeah. but not like going mental and you know getting bevied all the time. You ever get in a fight with Deeks now? No, no. Nah, I don't think Deeks ever got in fights. It was always cousins. Cousin. Going. <laughs> and then he'd just get Leonard, <laughs> didn't it? All the young boys used to stay in the flats over there, didn't they? There was loads of them, Jinkin that used to loads stay in there, didn't they? Brilliant. Uh, that modern team, what a team. O'Connor, Riordan, uh, yourself, Brown, Thompson, Whitaker, Fletcher, Sproul. Have you had to pick one? And I mean, by the way, I'm not being funny. You could keep going on with that team because there was like Gaz Caldwell, David Murphy, the left back. Good player. Boozy, uh, Boozy, Stephen Glass, Dean Shields. Uh, Chris Killen. Chris Killen's off his nut as well. He was oh, Saturday, absolute yeah. nutter. Any, any, any stories of Kiffer now? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Like, there's none you can repeat on camera. He used to do a wee wee on the bar all the time. And, uh... He was just, he, he, was a, he was a lunatic. Uh-huh, he, he was, was an lunatic. absolute lunatic. And I, like, when we played together, I found out that when he was, because he was at Man City. Oh, was he right? I was at Man City. And um, we, we, completely unbeknown to the two of us, uh, had apartments that were like, a stone's throw for each other in, uh, at Salford Keys in Manchester. Oh, really, right? Uh, uh, something that Gaz said when we interviewed them was if that team had stayed together for another couple of years, they would have won the league. Well, you go they, with they, that? They, I don't know if they would have won the league, but they certainly would have been up there challenging, that's for sure. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that because not only is that team sticking together um, and making, you know, and progressing and becoming better for the, you know, the, for Hibs, it also means that they're no strengthening the other teams that they all went to, mm. you know? Um, so I mean, look, you, you can never say definitively, but I, I would think if that team had stayed together for a, you know another couple of years with with the same manager, 
then there's a chance that they would have been challenged, you know. Next question, that's what we're leading on to. Change of manager, John Collins comes in. First question, for, how impressive is his six-pack? Oh, that's impressive. Is there's it? no doubt about it. How I, many times did you see it daily? Um, well, I, you had an Under Armour top on that you used to walk about and so you could see it through that, like, continually. And would you pull players up for not having that? I mean, well, when he first came in, you've heard the story. I mean, yeah, when, he first, when, he, when he first came in, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a bit embarrassing. You know, there was a team meeting in the changing room and it was, uh, this is what I'm going to get you, so this is what you're going to get. And then taking you through to his uh, his manager's office. Well, I thought you were going to say bedroom. <laughs> taking you through to his manager's office and um, getting, uh, doing like, you know, weighing you and doing like the body fats and stuff like that. And he's coming over and like, go on, get one of them. That's what we're going to get you. You know, just a bit like... Get the boys out and play. Huh? And then folk, boys are coming back to the changing room like, you're never going to fucking believe <laughs> what's going on through there. <laughs> what about on the training pitch? Was he better? Pish. Was he? No. I, I, see, this is the thing. There, you know, there's this myth that had uh, sort of developed that the boys were, like, spitting the dummy out because it was, like, hard and it was, like, European-style training and all that. It was pish. Mm-hmm. It was, like, it was slow. The tempo was crap. It was... You know, it was like, you'd do like shooting drills that were like the full length of the park, you know, pass, 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 have a shot, and you're like, ah, what is this? In a game, uh-huh. What is this? You know, so it was the it was the training. Right. The, the, the boys were like, it wasn't the, the intensity, or it was because it wasn't the intense. Right. And the training was just like, you weren't learning anything, you know? And this is a guy who, you know, when he walks into the changing room, instantly commanded respect because of what he'd done as a player. Um, and when he talks about the game, or when he, you know, when I used to see him on the telly and talking about the game, he seemed like he yeah, had good ideas, but he was his interpersonal skills and being able to relate it and talk to folk, that was just. So see, good see even as a young guy, would you be the one that would have to say something? I, I, do you know, like, so. Looking back in hindsight, I can understand that managers like viewed me as being difficult. But what I was doing was trying to, you know, be constructive. And weak characters find it difficult to be able to like handle folk that have got an opinion. Mm-hmm. I recognise that. But the, you know, the best managers that I worked with were the ones that were open. You know, it was an open forum. What are the th- what, what's the thoughts? What we're we talking about? You know, mm-hmm. how can we make it better? And then you feel as an individual like you know you're being listened to. They're never always going to agree with you. You don't expect them always to agree with you. But the folk that want to suppress, you know, players and like shut up, didn't talk. You know. That, all, you're, all you're creating there is like a pressure cooker that's going to explode at some point. So would Collins not take the players' ideas on board? No, absolutely Why no chance. Know where, huh? Well, I mean, look, I'll give you an example. So um, before uh, the cup final, went away to Marbella. And at this nice. point, it was like, it was bubbling under the surface. Boys weren't really happy. And um, went away to Marbella and it was like, all these sort of like rules in place. You can't do this, can't do that. Be in your room at this time. Do this, do that. And it was just like that. Boys are like, it's a youth team and, and I'm not being funny. Like as I said before, I, you know, especially when I was playing, I barely drank. I wasn't a, a, a big drinker at all. And like the boys, the first night we got there, they were like, "All oh, right, well, we'll go down to the like the harbour." So everyone's like, "We'll go down now." And the fact that we're down there, and the fact that it was like dinny this, dinny that, it was almost I almost stood there thinking to myself. I, I want a pint but I mean all the rest of the boys are like battering at the pints yeah. you know and I was like oh, I, and I, I can't mind whether I did or I don't I didn't I probably didn't and then it was like back to the, the um, back to the hotel and the next day like something happened I can't even remember what it was but anyway there was like a crisis meeting I think we were training and there was like clearly there was just it was bubbling under the surface so Collins calls a crisis meeting after a day and a half in Marbella right so the boys are, the boys are. Uh, ran out of beer. Is that the, the guy? Bo- the, the boys are lined up, and uh, he's talking about like, I've done this for years. I've got used to Marbella. The chairman's like, no, 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 I'm getting this for you. I'm doing this. It was all about like what he's and we hyphen sprill pipes up and goes like that. He says, <laughs> he says, you know what? He says, I used to be a fucking welder. He says, I'd rather be fucking welding than fucking standing here right now. <laughs> oh, and it was like, ah, what? and then and then he, he got up. Storm, I, no, I tried to say to him, I said, I said, I said to him, he says, look, try to be constructive. I said, the issue is, right, you've put all these restrictions on boys, right, saying we can't do this, can't do that, da 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 I said, 
human nature is, when you tell somebody they can't do something, they want to do it. Yeah. I said, you've got to give us a bit of rope. Just if we, if, adults, if we hang ourselves, then you can come down at us and go like, that's how it works. I said, but you can't like stop us doing everything. Just like, give us a bit of trust. And he was like, fucking nonsense, fuck it. And then he stormed off. And then... To do some setups. Tommy Craig, <laughs> Tommy Craig <laughs> standing up at the top and he was like, eh, any more chat? And uh, Bruni was like, ah, he says, well, what do you mean any more chat? He says, he's fucking up sticked and fucked off. He says, he won't even listen. You know, he's asking us what the problem is. He says, and he's just fucked off. <laughs> so he wasn't even wanting to listen. How good is Bruni's interview after that game? Oh, aye, aye. <laughs> Who aye. put him up for that, man? Oh, God knows. So was there a revolt? Did you, was it your broad Pete's house? Or, uh... It was meant to be here. Right. And uh, we, were, we, were on, we were all in the town. So it was mine. It was only two players that weren't there. And, um, you, do you want to name them there? No, no, I'm not going to name them. No. There was only two players that weren't, they weren't there. And uh, it was meant to be here. Rod did like said, aye, door's always open. So we said, right, we'll go meet you. So we're up the town in a... A restaurant, all having a meal, and then coming here. So then a few of the boys are getting phone calls for the press, going like, eh, "Are you meeting Rod Petrie at uh, Easter Road tonight?" And the boys are like, eh, "Nah, nah, nah." So anyway, then Rod phoned Bruni and was like, eh, "You can't come here. There's press outside." So it was like, "Oh fucking hell!" <laughs> so uh, so Bruni was like, "Right, eh, I'll speak to the boys. What we're going to do?" So then we all had a bit of a, like chat and was like, "What we're going to do?" And then Rod phoned back and went, "You can come to my house." <laughs> So he just didn't let me slow there. So there was like a convoy about five cars heading down like the, oh, the bypass to go to Rod's house to like speak to him about like, you know, what was what was going on. How's his gaff nice? That's nice, eh? Backs onto the golf course, lovely. Oh. Yeah, lovely. And the, was that was that lead to your exit at Hibs? Because you kinda got the blame, did you? hundred percent I got the blame, aye. Yeah. From who cons? Ah, because it was a it was a it was an easy target. You know, shift the blame onto him onto me. He thought a, a quick backstory. He came to me before the January transfer window and was like, look, um, I want to build a team around you. I think I can get you back into the Scotland squad. Um, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, look, I says, I'm enjoying my time here. And up until that point, I was getting on fine with Maybe he'd been in the job a couple of months. I says, I'm no desperate looking to like leave Edinburgh. I'm settled. Um, but I says, I want to just see what else is available before I commit. And he went, right, okay, I understand. He said, but you need to understand, you know, I want to build a team range in, I need to know what your plans are. And I says, like, I totally appreciate that. My problem is, I'm too honest. Folk actually think I'm working an angle. And I said, what I'll do with you is, if I speak to anybody, I'll just keep you up to the speed and let right, you know right. what's going on. And I think that he thought that I'd already, like, Spoke signed clubs, somewhere. Right. And then from that moment on, he basically just, like, ostracised me, you know, pushed me out a wee bit. Just he, his skills, as I told you before, were weren't they great? And he just like started being a total prick. What was it? Just training him with the reserves, no speaking to you. I no. Well, basically after the the cup final, so it had been like lingering about, and then obviously it all exploded with the the the, the, the um the what you call it the 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 meeting down at the Rod's house. Mm -hmm. Then it was like the cup final, which I never played in. So I was the one that basically got like you know. And then everybody knows there's been a revolt. I'm no playing. So the folk are putting two, two together and coming up with like, you know, 44. Yeah. And then... Um, that was Gaz O'Connor doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so it's like, oh, I will. And then, you know, the, the, the rumour mill starts and everything like that. So um, I, then he was basically, he came in, he handed me a letter saying like, uh, you're like, go away, like free to leave type thing. Right. And I was like, ah, he says, all right, great. This is... I think I'm just going to walk out the door like this is, and everybody thinks that like I was the the, the problem. Are you going to get a club after and that? I'm just, going to, I'm just going to leave. So anyway, I spoke to, I phoned Roy Keane at the time. Roy just did, because I, I, I was like I can't like I needed like some help. Eh? Yeah. Um, and Roy was just taking over at Sunderland, and um, Roy was like, "Look, he says, don't you fucking worry about it." And I was going, right, well, that's very fucking easy for you to be saying, like, didn't worry about it. Says, but I'm getting, like, you know, like, pillorate here, and I'm getting, like, you know, sort of pointed the finger at it as if, like, it's me that's, like, the, the, the ringleader or not. He says, look, he says, you can look yourself in the mirror. You know you're doing things the right way. He says, these <laughs> all fucking just, like, you know, scarper. Play it, uh -huh. He says, can you look yourself in the mirror and know you're fucking doing the right thing for the, for the right reasons? I was like, aye, aye. He says, well, you're fine then. And I was going, aye, but Roy, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, you know, like, where am I going to go? And he was like, well, 
you could be coming here. You might come down here or whatever. And it just so happened, Hibs, like, reserves, with Mark Proctor, who was talking oh, about Proctor, that uh-huh. guy, Proc, uh, went down to Sunderland and played, like, a bounce game. And you know yourself when you've done well. Yeah. So I'd done well, and Roy was there chatting away. So then Roy was like, look, come down for a couple of weeks and train. They'd just been promoted to the, the top flight, though, so I was thinking, like... Anyway, went down, training. Training was fine, and then played a bounce game in training, and I was murder. You know yourself when you know yourself when you're murder. And Ask me every week, mate. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and Roy just basically said, like, look, you know, can he do it? And I was like, fine, totally. You know, that was wasn't there, wasn't there a problem. So uh, that was my time. Done. See, like, you've played for Man United. How, how worried are you when you hear that that somebody doesn't want you've been released for one club? Somebody else doesn't want you. Do you begin to worry? Um, I, I, but probably more from the fact that because like I was in the situation where I didn't want to leave, you know, Edinburgh. Yeah. So, you know, you're obviously like, I, I, when I came back up the road for Man United, it was all for just reasons away from football. It wasn't. It wasn't really anything to do with football. I just wanted to come home, and I wasn't ready to leave at that point. So you're limiting your opportunity, you're limiting your, you know, uh, options. Chance, yeah. And then, you know, when up the road, there's only like, you know, with the greatest respect, it wasn't like I was going to be like happy to go and play at like every club. So it was, yeah, it was, it was a, a small window of. Was there never know, a thought of just sticking it out and seeing if Collins went before you? Nah, because nah. no, because I was already at that stage where I wasn't sure as if I was going to be staying anyway. You right. know, I was looking elsewhere. I'd spoken to Stoke. Um, when uh, when this was all going on, like in the January window, I'd spoken to Stoke, so there was I knew there was going to be like options. Uh, John Park had just gone to Celtic, and he'd said because big Chris Killen had gone to, to Celtic mm-hmm. as well in that summer, and big John had said, uh, no, not big John, John's not a big guy. John Park said, look, there could be a chance here as well, but they need to move on. I think it was uh, Gravison, and uh, who's the other boy? The was he Russian or something? Oh, Yarisek. Yarisek. Yeah. He was like, you need to move a lot of boys on. And he said, there might be a chance here. And before anything came of that, Hearts had come back and says, like, do you want to come to Hearts? And I was like, I felt then, like, you know what? It's concrete offer. I'm not, like, obviously I'm not moving then. And I felt like I had unfinished business. A point to prove. Uh, uh, just on the driving, uh, so many promising young lads at Hibs at that time, world at their feet. How important was it that he's responsibility when it came to driving and stuff like that because it's easy for young guys to get carried away with fast cars do you know massively important and I remember because at that time you know Hibs obviously didn't have a training ground so it was at the stadium and then you're driving to, to training and uh, there was a young lad wee Jay Shields oh, uh, he was a screwball Jay Shields remember wee Jay Shields hard as nails aye uh-huh. aye wee Jay wrapped his car round a uh, like a lamp post or something on the way back for training one day and I think you know when it's, things like that happen quite mm. you know uh, at close quarters it sort of gives everybody a wee sort of joke as to be like you need to just take a, yeah. a, a wee sort of think to yourself <laughs> the lamp post the lamp post would have came off worse if it hit Jay's head, <laughs> Jay's head <laughs> some size wasn't it yeah. <laughs> uh, was there a dream car you had when, as a kid that you always wanted not it's really much better than this does it <laughs> not really I'm not a big car nah. enthusiast what about Man United did you, you have a first car I had a Peugeot 306 it was my first ever was car was that a banger huh? um, my, it was my mate this old man who ran, like he had a load of car garages up here, passed my test, went down and picked it up just at uh, Sight Hill in, uh, in Edinburgh. And then I remember driving along like a sort of dual carriageway, the, the, the guile, and I remember sort of like, you know, checking all your mirrors and all that, pulled it in the outside lane and almost crashed into the first car that was <laughs> taken over. Was, oh. did, so, you, uh, did you ever see, obviously I've heard stories about Ferguson when boys get new cars and tells him to take it back you ever seen it not so much cars and stuff like that but just you know, the gaffer was did he know everything eh? oh he knew everything eh? absolutely he knew everything and made sure that you know boys were keeping their feet firmly on the, the ground like remember when Wes had Wes Brown had signed by an agent and um, he called all us so Wes was the year above me so pretty like my second year right. so he uh, called all the boys into the the uh, his office and he's got Wes standing at the the top of the room behind his uh, there's a oh, bit of culture seat, for you there oh, after lovely. a seat did I get that in Glasgow mate there's a palace tremendous Holyrood a shin and there's the parliament 
Is that Craig Levine's house? Uh, yeah, I think so, aye. <laughs> <laughs> there's a parliament there. Yeah. That's where you should be by you. Uh... Well, there's a flag there at the end that's uh, coming down, but the other one should be coming down soon, hopefully. Oh, you're big for the old independence, aren't you? Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right, back on to Fergie, right, I love this. And uh, Wes was at the end of the, uh, the the room behind his desk, and the gaffer had like a, uh, a cricket bat in his hand, and he was like, this fucking prick's just signed by a fucking agent. And he was like, <laughs> I'm going to have to fucking sort it out. He says, if any of you pricks fucking think you're going to be signing with an agent, you'll be getting fucking skilled with this or not. How <laughs> <laughs> was, was Wes like, Brown's face? He was just like, oh. Wes was just standing there like. <laughs> oh, tremendous, man. Would he, um, were you being Scotch, would he take a wee, wee bit more of an interest in you? Aye, he took an interest in all the young lads, to be perfectly honest, but I think looking back on it, aye, there was a, there was an element of, like, yeah, young Scottish boys are down the road. He would, aye, he would look out. He would look out for you, mm-hmm. definitely. I mean, the first time, first time I ever went down to Manchester, I was like uh, 12 year old. So went down, and it was like boys for all over Scotland, England, Ireland, Wales, some for the continent as well. And um, it's, you're playing amongst your peers. Yeah. And um, I remember playing the game and looking across and seeing the gaffer standing at the side of the park watching us 12 year olds playing and you're oh. like Jesus sakes and he was standing talking to my scout a boy called Andy Perry and then um, after the game coming over how hey, are you Michael you alright enjoying your time down here and you're just like ah, brilliant great brilliant and then from that moment on he would always like you know just ask you about your family your mum and dad you had a big brother um, and always like asking you about like and remember their names wow. all the time. Do you think that's why he was so, so successful? Yeah. They be things that uh-huh. totally because uh-huh. that's that's you know it's those you know it's man management. Yeah, it's people touches, skills. Yeah. It's people skills. That's why people want to play for you, isn't it? Yeah, uh-huh. of course it is. Because yeah. so then when he batters you, you know you're no spitting the dummy. You're like hey, I'll fucking show you. Mm. You know because you want to get you want to get their. You feel like you've let them do almost. You want them to love you again. Uh, definitely. Well, you were Rangers before you ended up Man United. So I, when I was so obviously when I went down to Man United when I was twelve, I was still I was still here. So it was school holidays. I'd go down south. When I was still up here, I ended up the last sort of two or three years of when I was still at school here. I was at uh, at Rangers, and it got to the stage where if I was staying in Scotland, I would have signed for Rangers, and if I was going down south, I was going to go to United. Probably about. 18 months out from leaving school I, in my mind I'd probably settled on look I'm, I'm going to go to United why? because of Ferguson? just a multitude of reasons it was like pff, best club in the world Yeah. give youth a chance you know because at that point you know Rangers were flooded with like you know boys that they would just bring in they never really gave young boys a chance mm. and at United it was like you know it was the best uh, it was the best coaches you yeah. know Um Former teammates of yours have already told us how vocal and passionate you could be in training, especially. Uh, even as a young boy training with the superstars, were you still the same or were you a bit more quiet? It was probably more like vocal and uh, frustration with myself rather than like, you know, having a go at the, the first team boys. But right up until that level, I, yeah, I would. Anybody that was, you know, playing with. But it wasn't, it, it wasn't like having a go at. You know, boys. I'd be like, I'm gonna go as much of myself. Yeah. You know, frustration if not doing the right things or whatever. And where do you get that from? Is your mum and dad like that? My mum, uh, like to a small extent, but no, really. It's just, just wanting to, you know. I, I'd, so I was just gonna say person. perfectionist. Just wanting to do things the right way. Yeah. Aye. Do you think that kind of killed you? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think that. I mean, look, it's that, you know, there's a, there's a thing called uh, uh, psychological momentum, right? When a youngster get, makes into, uh, when they step up levels, that first stage is so crucial for you to believe that oh, I can do this. Yeah. So if you step up, you know, from like youth to reserves, reserves to first team, and that initial transition period is like quite smooth, that's so important. And it's that stays with you Aye. for the rest yeah. of the day. Yeah, uh-huh. because you get to that next level and you're like, well, I can do this. Mm. This is like normal. My problem was, as I said to you before, I made that step and I was in with the first team, but that period was too long. You know, I, I wasn't 
I didn't I wasn't playing enough to then feel like I'm comfortable uh, this is fine yeah so yeah. then you start to have little bits of you know doubt and that's the first time that had ever happened for me because I always thought maybe Tony McKean or something like that rubbed off on you and that's why you had that same oh, sort no, of mentality no, no, that no, I mean that of course that did yeah. I definitely because they're your you know they're the folk you're looking up to they're the folk that like you're you're working with and, and that's the you know and they're the best so you want to like you know replicate and, and yeah similar sort of character as well but Roy had like carte blanche to do whatever he wanted did he? aye but it was like everything he'd done was to win right. you know so Alex Ferguson let him do that because he knows it was good aye. examples that he's setting aye yeah yeah uh, was he kind of like your idol at United? Aye, aye. I mean, and I got on very well with Roy as well. So, like, you know, he would talk to you, he would, you know, sat pretty close to him in the changing room as well. And he was, he's a, he's a properly, like, switched on guy. So you would be able to talk to him about, you know, other things. You know, things away from football. And then talking about football and obviously playing the same position. All those types of things. What's, uh, what's the worst you've seen him lose it? <laughs> loads, like absolutely loads. I'm trying to think. Would it be anyone that would get it? Aye, anybody. Aye, totally. And you know, when when he <clears throat> when he when he signed for Celtic, he stayed through in Edinburgh and he was at uh, the hotel just round the back from my, uh, where I stayed in the city centre. So I used to go round and have like a, a coffee with him. And he he said at that point that was him away from his family. He was like, I recognise now that I was probably a bit too hard on some boys. Like when Veron and that signed, he says he, he used to just absolutely batter him you know like he's didn't fucking want to be here fuck off you know and those oh, sorts yeah. of things and it was like you know away from your family the other side of the world and, type he's stuff. Seen it on and he's like side, yeah. maybe it was just a wee bit too hard on them oh so he has got a soft side as well oh, he's not stupid is he? you know but like at the same time <laughs> that's a small moment yeah no, he'd still <laughs> caveat that with oh, well, at least you can still have a smile on your face <laughs> or something because I was a young boy at Celtic when he came and See when he gave you that death stare, man. Oh my, your balls jumped into your stomach, didn't it? Oh, like, like, did you get it from him? Oh, everybody got it. Like, say, you could be sitting in the changing room, right, going out to training, like chatting to him, having a laugh and a joke, right. Five minutes later, you could be out doing boxes, and he'd smash a bot you, right. And if you didn't, like, you know, instantly like deal with, it, fucking wake up, fuck's sake. How the fuck if you can't handle that? How the fuck are you going to handle playing in front of 67,000? Fuck's sake, get a fucking... Like, and you'd be like that. <laughs> oh, That's tough as a young boy, eh? But that, do you know what? You had to deal with it, and he was right. If you can't handle that at training, then, you know, 70,000 folk at Old Trafford, you know, if you didn't deal with a pass... Could there, be the, si- could, could there be the side to that he would pull you and give you advice as well? Absolutely, as I was yeah. saying to you before. Like, you know... Out of that sort of moment of like, you know, sort of heat, you'd be sitting in the changing room, you know, and he would like, of course he would talk yeah. to you, he'd explain stuff. What, uh, what about Bex? How cool was he? <laughs> was he brilliant at her? Aye, aye, I mean, yeah. But, you know, the thing is, all, that whole, like, team, all great guys. That was why they were the best. That's why they were the best, because they had humility about them, never got you know above their station and they worked their absolute backside off so they were all brilliant and the thing is i remember making uh, my debut at uh, in the league against middlesbrough away and the gaffer had uh, contact well, actually it wasn't the gap no i think it was the gaffer or dennis law's daughter who was the uh, like the media right. girl had phoned my folks to say look michael's starting so they'd come down to the riverside to watch the, the game and they were sat next to Bex's man and dad. So even like his man and dad, they're like talking to like mama and dad about like, oh I remember when David made his debut, blah blah blah. And then I'm in the changing room, you're obviously like, you're, you're a wee bit nervous. Yeah. And but Bex is there and he's like, look, just keep doing what you've done. So this is why you're here. You know, you're here because of the player you are. Then he's trying to do anything different, just play your normal game. It's all wee bits like that. And then walking out to the uh, for the start of the game, and then um, Paul Lynch was the captain of Middlesbrough at the time. Right. And Butty and Paul Lynch were quite tight. And Butty, like, he goes to me, he says, Right, Michael, he says, he's going to try and fucking bully you. He says, First chance you get, fucking smash him. So, <laughs> so I remember it was like, he was running down the park, and I remember sliding in and taking Paul Lynch out. And Butty just came over and went, Fucking brilliant. Fucking brilliant. Amazing. So these boys have all been through the exact same thing. 
David Nuggets advice are brilliant, isn't it? Just go and smash him and get yourself Aye. in the game. Uh, yeah. So tremendous. that's what made United special as well, because you had guys that had been through the exact same thing that you'd been through, and they wanted to fucking help you. Mm. You know, my favourite player of all time, Scholes. Eh? He's an absolute different class. But how was he so good? Good Scholes. Like I know his passing's brilliant, but like his technique. His vision, couldn't his, run game, that, couldn't his game understanding. I wouldn't say that he couldn't run, but it wasn't like he, he was an athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was up last month. I saw him. Him and Fletch were up. The uh, SFA thing. I seen and that. Bruni yeah. was so. I was doing what you were doing. I was speaking to them, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and we were just chatting about like we were just chatting about football, and um, Scolzi was just different class. I mean, never. You know, he's the he's the one guy that. Well, it was funny because. This, this sort of sums it up. Fletch had lost his phone, or thought he'd lost his phone, and it was like, fuck's sake, Scholes, you got my fucking phone. He didn't actually have his phone, but he's one of those wee guys that was constantly like doing stuff, but he would never be the one that you would instantly hang. You'd be like looking around the street and go like, have you done it, you done it, yeah. And then it would be like, Scholes, you'd be something like that. Well, <laughs> Brilliant, eh? But the reason, he's just, football brain. When Ruud van Nistelrooy signed for United, when Ruud signed, I always remember Ruud saying, everybody on the continent, the one they want to know about Scholes. So the, the regard that he was held, the, the high regard he was held by like the European boys was like, he was the best. Yes, yeah. Aye. Because he was such a technical player. I sound like a wee guy here just asking all these questions, I'm sorry, but they, these aren't even on the sheet. But like, see, what, who, who did you kind of model yourself on more? Was it Keen or Scholes? Did you try and be like one of them or was it? No, I, I, no. <sighs> Nah, not really. It was just a bit of everything. You know, you had to be your own sort of player. So a bit of a bit of everything. You know, and again, I was talking to Scolzi and Fletch about this like last month. The game's changed so much, and we were talking about this like, and they spoke about it in the the seminar as well. But we were talking about this, saying that like at United at that time, when you were a midfielder, you had you did everything. You defended, you attacked, you played, mm. you smashed folk. You know, you had to do everything. The game's changed now. You've got like you know defensive midfielders. You've got number eight. You've got number ten. Uh, you've got all does that this. You? Well, it, probably to begin with, when defensive midfielders became like a, a thing, and you're thinking to yourself, like, I've got the fucking easiest job in the world. <laughs> but the game's evolved so much now that you know the defensive midfielder has to do so much more. So the game's changed. It's a lot more tactical now in the game. Uh, uh, see, when you were, as you say, you were maybe struggling towards the end of your career. Were you, were you a wee bit worried about what you were going to do next? Um, not, no, not at the, you know, the end of my career was a bit, it was, it was weird. Um, there was loads of like, you know, sort of reasons why I ended up doing what I, what I did in, in regards to just like stopping. But once you stopped, aye, it's it's the same for any player, and that's why you know mental health is such a big thing yeah. about folk. Stopping and they don't know anything else. And that's one of the big reasons I keep going back to it. It was why I was in Edinburgh because mm. I had a life away from football. So the one, the only thing I was sure of when I was going to stop was that I wanted to be in Edinburgh. That was it. And I made that decision. I was like, right, I want to be in Edinburgh. That was the only thing I knew about that I was certain of, but I didn't want to play football here anymore. So I was just like, right. Stop. I'll do something else. And just like stop. That was it. Right, we'll come to the end in a bit, but just back on uh, yeah. Fergie and, uh, and on Beck, Bex. Uh, was there always tension between them? Nah, not at all. No, and and like I suppose towards the end you could sense that, you know, something was brewing and there was obviously the incident where just before the Leeds United game where um, I think was it I mean I'm trying to the haircut, you got a haircut Nah, it was Victoria had been at a fashion shoot or something Probably didn't it. <laughs> or and then she was ill or something he was having to look after the kids and he couldn't go couldn't make it into training one day and then he basically like binned them for the Legion United game and obviously the Legion United was a massive mm. game huge game um, that was when they had like Kuehl and aye. Boyer and that weren't yeah. it uh, they were Champions aye. League team yeah. Robbie Keane yeah. Viduka uh, I think Rio had, no Rio had joined United at that point but they were aye, they were a Champions League mob aye and he dropped them. Um, so th- I mean, it was it was bubbling under the surface for a while. But you know, as a youngster as well, like you, you know, you're not in the inner sanctum of like seeing what's going on, uh, in you know, private meetings and stuff yeah. like that. But I, I think it was. It was was getting, Bex always different for everyone else? Um, Calling him Bex, like I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, t- 
to, to a certain extent, but then he was the same as everyone else as well. You know, which is a bit of a contradiction in terms. No, but, but like he was grounded, but also he was I, a bit more. Aye, uh-huh. yeah, he was, but he was still one of the lads. Yeah, aye. Everyone can't be the same to him. No, exactly. Aye. So you know, he, he was. He, Would he practice as much as schools? Oh, aye, and all of them, everybody. Aye, totally. Uh-huh. Yeah. So he never took his foot off the gas. No, 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 not at all. Hence why he played till the you know the the age that he played. Yeah. And he was you know you look at the Nickies and look at the Nickies still on, you know. That's because he just like grafted. Yeah. Because he loved football so much. He is gorgeous, isn't he? <laughs> um, ever seen a hair dry in full flow? Well, aye. A number of occasions. I remember um, <laughs> I was playing a under 21 game, Scotland under 21 game. So I was back up the road. Or, I, I think it was Northern Ireland. I I've told the story a few times. I can't really. I think it was Northern Ireland at St Mirren. And um, we were. 1-1 one, one or something late on and we would battered them like just frustrated anyway I slid and won the ball the ref's given like a free kick and I was raging and I picked the ball up and I went to like slam it into the ground and as I went to throw it it was wet it was wet and it sort of came flying out my hand so I went to throw it in the ground and it came flying out my hand and hit the ref oh, no. so the ref's like sent me off and I was like oh fuck so anyway I thought right I'll send it off and I'll just deal with it so drive back down the road <laughs> that train the next day getting changed going upstairs to go to breakfast and the gaffer's like ah, you in my fucking office now and I was like ah, oh, shit so he's like he called me through and he was like ah, you ain't with me fucking no you ain't got, you, you just ain't got fucking stupid and I was like ah, what, what, what he meant if you ever fucking do something like that again he says, I don't care whether you're up the road or fucking playing for United, because you're always re- representing this club. If you ever do something like that again, you will be out that fucking door quicker than your arse can fucking touch it. And I was like, ah, all right, I, 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 I. He says, I don't care how fucking well you're respected or how fucking far we think you're going. That's you. You're fucking done. Wow. <laughs> See, when you'd been sent off, were you expecting that from him? To a certain extent. Yeah. Like, was there times where you would do something bad and he wouldn't have shot with you? Aye. Or, was, Aye, there was, did he pick or, 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 or not, or not so much bad, or there's things that he would maybe do that you're thinking like, oh, fuck, he's, he's going to nail me, but nah, he wouldn't. Have. And then there's other there game at Burnley. I remember getting taken off at like half time and he fucking nailed me. And then the next morning he came in and he was like, look, he says, that was, that was too much. He says, I've, I've watched it again. That wasn't fair, you know. So he, he was. That, that's why he was the best because yeah. he knew when you needed, like you know, a sort of arm around the shoulder, and he knew when to, like you know, give you a, a fucking absolute like doing. How was he when you left? Ah, well, then, then there's the other thing. So no sentimentality when it comes to that, and that's you know, you look across the board at the boys that have left that club, like the top top players. It's fucking decapitation. Ruthless. You you are gone, and that was the same for me. So obviously, I still had. Uh, a few years on my contract I was at uh, I'd been training with Rangers I'd come back up road I'd agreed a deal to sign there when Big McLeish and um, I had to agree compensation at United and he basically was trying to offer me like a tenth of the contract to go and I was like I, I was like I can't I can't really I, like, I says that's like money that could like you know Bias. look after uh. like Look after me for the rest of it. I was like, I, I can't just like, and he was just like, fucking hell, I never thought I'd see the day where fucking money, money is like dictating what you're doing. Because he knew that it would cut you deep, you know, because yeah. it like, that's no what I was about. So he knew what buttons to press. And I, at the end, of it, I was, I was, I was going to, I was well, going to. Took it. No, I was going to, right. but then the whole Rangers thing like fell through. And that's when I went on loan to United, to Hearts. And I took a 40% wage cut just to go to Hearts because I just wanted to come home. He's not daft, is he? No. Oh, scary stuff, man. Well, it's hard to say no to a guy like that, though, isn't it? Uh, aye. Basically. He, but he knows that, doesn't he? Of course he does. Uh, of course he does. Punditry, current job. Mm-hmm. When, as you say, you were coming to the end, you kind of knew it was coming to an end. When did you think I'd be good as a pundit? Pundits weren't really a big thing when you first started in Scotland, was it? No, Who would it have been back then before I, you started? I've no idea. Exactly, I, I couldn't even tell you. I, I've no idea because I didn't really pay a great deal of attention. Um, I, do you know, I never thought it. 
I, somebody approach you? I never, like, anything I've done has not really been by design. Right. So it's you're just, a planner now? To a certain extent, but not like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to have that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to, nah, not really. It's just, for me, it's a bit more about, like, you know, gut instinct or what doing something I want to do, yeah. you know? So why and, did you want to do that? Well, when I stopped, it's like, you've got a, you've got to do something, otherwise your brain just vegetates, you know? And I'd, you know, the, you know, the, the, the typical route, you go and do coaching badges and stuff like that. But the thing is, you do, you do coaching badges, it's like, all right, there's like a couple of weeks, what are you doing for the, like the rest of the time? Mm. And also, you do your coaching badges and then it's like, well, it doesn't mean you like getting necessarily job. getting a job. Mm. And I just, so I'd, I'd done my coaching badge, but when I'd stopped, it was like New Year time. And then obviously, the turn of the New Year, you've got a lot of like derby games and stuff like that. So I had done some media stuff, obviously, when, when I was playing. And it's a small world, and a few of the, the guys that I, I knew in it had just said, oh, do you want to come and do like this game, that game? And then it just snowballed quite quickly. Right. And by the end of that season, like the, the son had asked us to like do a column, I was doing radio work, I'd done some TV work, and then it just it snowballed quite quickly. Did you get a wee buzzfeed in the, the punditry? Actually, so it was like, enjoyable because like you're still involved in the game. Yeah. You know, so there was an element of that, aye. Um, and then probably like about 18 months, you know, then it got to a stage where like, well, uh, uh, this could this could do, be something, you know. Yeah. Are you surprised at the, the, the amount of scrutiny that pundits come under now? Because um, it seems to be every new says in the paper or it's <laughs> been spoke about on a fans forum or... I laugh about it, to be perfectly honest. And I don't like... That's get, a credit I, to yourself that... Do you know, the way you've done it, you know what I mean? Without being without being dismissive of it or like, you know, like oblivious to what's going on. This is I keep going back to this, right? When I came back home, it was to play football and then be able to switch off and go away for it. And what I quite enjoy with what I do now is that, you know, there's a load of work through in Glasgow. I do, you know, travel all over the country, but all at the bases in Glasgow. I can drive back here and I can just switch off. Mm. I didn't like, I didn't think about it. I didn't get I didn't get bogged down in the politics of like you know he said this he's done that he's a prick he's an art you know yeah. I just like, I can switch off it. Even on the tw- even with Twitter and stuff like that do you, do you just switch it off when you go home? Well, it's not that I switch it off I just laugh at it. You know. <laughs> see some of the tweets I see it replies to your tweets man. Oh my god. Uh, it's fun to say a lot like football. So say you're on with Chris Sutton. Uh-huh. Do you know that you need to be prepared? For what, for what he's going to like, is it? Do you, do you need to change how you are for certain pundits that you're going to be on with? I don't know. Nah. I think some folk probably will change, but I don't change. No, because, like, with, I try to find a balance between being, like, you know, conscious and aware of certain subjects, but not too conscious or aware that you actually then alter what you're going to say or do. Mm. Because I want to just try and be normal and natural. Um, and no like self filter or you know I can't say that. Okay. So I don't. I try and not think about it too much. Yeah, just take it as it comes. Yeah. Right? And then does it ever? Uh, does the tension ever continue off here? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? Like, I'll, I'll 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 tell you this. So, Big Chris and I got on great, and then about a year ago or whatever, it was it was embarrassing. So, big Chris, you know, with the whole Craig Levine thing, just yeah. try to, like, you know, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. So, there was an instant where Levine had, you know, said something publicly about me for about the third or fourth time. And Chris had, you know, said to me privately something. Yeah. And I was like, oh, right, aye, good, brilliant, you know. Whereas publicly before, he'd always been, you know, backing Levine just to try and stir the pot a bit. And then we were doing a game like a couple of days later, Hearts game. And then he was on here, saying the opposite, trying to get a reaction at me. And I was like, "What are you playing at?" Mm. Like, and I said this on here. I said, "You never, you weren't saying this privately." And he obviously was like a bit uncomfortable. And then afterwards, it was like some text messages going back and forward, and like. I'm not. I'm not going to say you know much more. Right. But it was like just a bit standoffish. Is, 
Did, does he do that just for ratings and stuff like that? Like, on camera? See, before it, do, you, do you sometimes need to say to yourself, I'm not going to bite them today? Or can you just not help yourself? No, but I, to be honest, I, I, like, I wouldn't even bite to him. You know what I mean? Like, if he's saying something... But other people do, don't they? Do you I think, think he just does it to get people to bite ahead? A wee bit, but he's also he's not going to say something that he doesn't believe or doesn't think. Right. You know? yeah. But he might, like, emphasise it just for, a, like, you know, to get a reaction. Mm. I mean, you'd I mean, you been in... At Celtic when Christmas. Hey, he was there. like that as a player as well. Aye. Aye. It's just the kind of guy he is. That's the kind of guy he is. Makes for great telly, though, doesn't he? Aye. It? And look, he's he's not going to say something that he doesn't believe. At least I don't think. I, I think he believes everything he's saying, but he'll emphasise it a bit more just to try and get like you know a wee bit more yeah. out of somebody. And the stuff like obviously with the Levine and things like that. That's probably one thing I think that it, because it was like me, and because. It was like, you know, he was desperately trying to, like, you know, get something that would, like, you know, get a reaction. He probably, I don't know whether, it, I don't know what his genuine thoughts are on, on Levine. Um, but I think that was one that he was definitely trying to, like, overemphasize. Yeah. See if you were a bump into Levine, do you think it'd be all right? That was the bump into him? Yeah. Do you know, see, with, with most things, I couldn't give a flying, right? Uh-huh. But with him, I've got no doubt the type of character he is, it would definitely not be all right. No chance. I remember the uh, start of this season, possibly start of this season, um, game at Tynecastle. I'd been doing the uh, work and I was walking back up and out and Nasey was walking like through the door. So Nasey would walked through the door and he was like, all right, Mikey, I'll see you later. And there was a few folk, I think it was maybe family members or whatever for Nasey, walking through the door as well. So we're walking round this bend. Nasey's walked to his family members, oh, hi, hi. And then he's walked to it right behind them. Obviously, didn't he know it was me? And it was like... And then just, like, walked off. Couldn't he? Couldn't wow. he bring him... Aye. Couldn't he bring himself? Do you worry about bumping into him there? Not on there? Well, I've got, what would I worry about? Mm-hmm. Confrontation there. I couldn't get, like, all I've ever done is say, you know, what Give I believe opinion, to be, yeah. like, the truth. Now, truth is, you know, subjective. <laughs> you know, everybody's got a version of the truth, but it's my opinion, right? Yeah. So, I'm not going to, like, I, I would never say something publicly that I wouldn't say privately. Or, sorry, I would never say, I, I would never say something, to, you know, uh, like, out in the open that I wouldn't privately say to somebody's say to face. Somebody's face, yeah. Right. So, it's like, I've got nothing to, like, you know, be worried about or anything like that. At the end of the day, that's what you're paid to do, isn't it? Aye. Yeah, I mean, and, and to be honest, I didn't think about it like that, but folk have said that before, well, that's what you're paid to do. And I'm like, aye. And that's probably why I'm comfortable doing what I do, because it's 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 a natural thing. That's, again, it's probably why, you know, manage, some managers found me sort of difficult to deal with. Mm-hmm. Uh, How do you enjoy it with Big Tomo? He's on, you, you disagree quite a lot in sports, did not you? <laughs> <laughs> is that I, the way you I, see he the he, game differently, I, or is it? I because he doesn't know football. <laughs> <laughs> does uh, Big Tom? It seems to me that you do Hunter's research and Big Tom would just swings it. Is that right? No, no. You couldn't be further no. from the truth, honestly. See, like the difference between Tom and I, right? Tom does absolute spades loads. Does of, he right? Aye, of research, and he has it all like you know written down. It's like here and it's there. I just like I, I remember I, things. Oh, no, right. no, off the cuff. I just remember things. And I can, like, visualise stuff. So, like, aye. So do you watch every game for the weekend, yeah? Aye. Full 90 minutes? No, no, no. I mean, you can't see the full 90 minutes of, of them all. So there'll be, like, you've obviously you've got editors that are there that edit the games. So, like, we'll know, like, the, the sort of talking points and the narrative of all the games. So, we'll, you, you know, the chances are you probably see um, at least, like, three games of the weekend some be on the telly you'll be at the game and then you'll be at another game because they're yeah. not all at Saturday at three o'clock and then the other games you'll have you'll know the, the narrative of the, the game right. and then it'll be edited up so you can you can or you can ask them say look I want you to look at X, Y and Z this is like the main story get, find point, me right. clips of blah 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 yeah. blah do you ever um, do you ever say something right on sports scene and straight away you think a certain group of fans are going to slaughter me for it <laughs> 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 um, there is only one group of fans and it's a purely it's a massive stereotype but there's only one group of fans that like have a real issue with, with me 
the rest is clearly you're going to have like you know some fans within any club that are oh that was the right and that was wrong you know you're always going to have a divergence of opinions yeah. but there's only one team that on mass have an issue with NNRC Rangers Aye. Uh, because they actually use trial by sports scene in relation to an SFA disciplinary process is that right? <laughs> possibly I, I wouldn't pay too much attention to it but I mean to be fair like sp- like the editors and and uh, we Johnny Sunderland as well. <laughs> I, think, I think Jonathan quite likes that phrase as well. So, the you know the the guys at Sports Scene have played on that trial by Sports Scene thing a wee bit as well. Yeah, right. Uh, just on road safety, a uh, lot of travelling with your job. Hi. Well, obviously, for the most of the TV stuff, it's driving through to, to Glasgow, yeah. or you know, then you've got the, the live games driving the games all over the country. So there's a fair bit of driving at, uh, but I quite. I quite enjoy it because it's not it's not every day it's not all the time so getting a wee like journey I can I can sit and just gives me a bit of time just to actually think yeah or listen to a, a podcast or something like that no mind <laughs> that's not for you is it I'm not <laughs> too I'm much not. nonsense too much carry on uh, always important to leave plenty of time take your time getting through it huh? aye yeah no speeding no 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 chance have cruise, you ever had any? Cruise any control. Points? Stick it into cruise control. Oh, this thing's got good cruise control on it. This thing drives itself, doesn't it? I've, uh, doesn't he do that yet? Um, <laughs> uh, I've had, like, points years ago, but I've got a clearing licence now. I've not had any points for a good wee while. Good, man. Uh, also, if people are driving, they can listen to you on the radio. Exactly. I love your debates. I do listen to that on the radio. Uh, I like you and Tom English together. You like, aye. That's, That's I, always I, a big battle as well, isn't it? I enjoy that. You know, Tom and I agree on a lot of things, but... You know, it'd be boring if everybody agrees on everything. Yeah. There's got you've got to stand your ground and argue your position. And I know some people are like, oh, it's ugh, shouting over folk. And ah, when it gets a bit too shouty, it can be a bit. But you want a lively debate. Of course you do. It's like Carragher and Keenan. You'd you rather want, that than watch want, people agreeing with each other all the time, ah, wouldn't you? You want a lively debate. And radio's easier, isn't so it? So I enjoy the I enjoy the radio. I, I wouldn't say it's easier. So you know, I always nah. think being on the radio is quite easy, but there's tellies. I, I mean, I, I mean. Again, without trying to sort of downplay it, I don't find any of it difficult. You know, it's enjoyable, mm. and it depends obviously like who you're who you're on with. We didn't do really do live stuff. Do you not get a bit worried about that when it's live now? Nah, nah, nah. Just nah. I didn't think about it. Right. You know, just easy. Nah. Uh, right, Dream Car Share, four passengers, long distance to Ross County. Who are you taking? Levine's in the boot. <laughs> 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 Who's our four? The Sunderland oh, seat's there, so we're giving him that. Oh, is he getting a place? Johnny's, me Jonathan's not getting a place, come on. Great talker, though. He's, you like his... Oh, he's Shetland. Is he for the Shetland? He's, a, he's, a he's got a great vocabulary, isn't he? He's a Shetland. Clever guy as well, no? Oh, he's not stupid. Uh-huh. He's not stupid, there's no doubt about that. Oh, that doesn't get you in the car, though, so who's our four? Big Tom, on it. Spend too much time with them, yeah. no chance. I know this no is chance. a this is a dream car show. That's... You'd have to get Fergie. It'd be a good chat with you and Fergie. Him in the front seat. Why don't you pick it? You tell I, me. I think I know who you're yeah. for. Right, you tell me. Alex Ferguson. Uh huh. Nicola Sturgeon. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think. What music are you into? I think you'd be into like wet, wet, wet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we need a musician. Who's your musician? Mark, what? Chris Boyd, Marty Pello. <laughs> <laughs> Marty Pello, have you been stung by a bee? <laughs> uh, two more, we need Sturgeon and Ferguson, that would be a good combo. Billy Conley? He gets picked quite a lot. Kevin Bridges. Kevin Bridges is good. Kevin Bridges. And we need one more. Oh. You got a hero? Not overly, nah. Uh, right, Hearts, here we are. Uh huh. What a place. Certainly transformed, didn't it? Right, I'm going to talk about um, your first spell. Wasn't quite it. Four different managers first season. Levine, Houston, John Robertson, Presley, McGinn, McGlynn, Joint, Chaos. Do you know what? Obviously, you just reading that out there, I hadn't actually realised that it was as mental as that. You know? Yeah, what, 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 what's going on with the players when this is happening? So, to be honest, at that stage... It, it didn't, it didn't really seem as mental because Levine had been at the club obviously for a, a, a fair length of time had left wasn't he sacked he'd left because he obviously was uh, headhunted by Leicester to go there 
So it wasn't like a, you know, like a club in crisis that the manager had been sacked. Mm. Um, and then Robbo came in and it seemed as if that would be like a, you know, a good fit. Done great at, uh, at Inverness. And the good thing was he wanted to play football, Robbo. So you're thinking like, oh, great, that should be good. But then it was on the cusp of Romanov, you know, taking, taking over and everything. Yeah. So there was a lot of uncertainty. Um, and then obviously Elvis. Um, the daddy. <laughs> Elvis taking over in, in the interim charge till the, the you know the back end of the season, so it was aye, it was a bit. Like, was it Donald Park that was with Robbo? Aye, Park good Park, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, very good. Some aye. man, aye. some handlebar moustache. Uh, <laughs> it was Craig Levine that actually signed you. So see when you first met me, you were quite impressed with Craig Levine back then. No, like I was just a love of hearts to get back. I, well, as I said, so basically I'd come back up the road. I was at Rangers then pre season. I'd agreed a deal to go there. Couldn't agree the settlement for United and when that fell through I remember i just bought uh, a place in Edinburgh I was in the in the apartment and I was just like I cannot I was like psychologically I was like I cannot go back down the road I was like I just couldn't go so I was up here for like a couple of days and I was like in such a bad place I was like I, I cannot like actually envision myself Getting in the car and driving back to Manchester, I, like, I just need to, and I need to stay up here. Mm. I didn't know what I was going to do, and then um, Hearts thing managed to sort of come about. Hearts had name money, so message got out that look, I'll, I'll come, you know, I'll take a whatever you're going to pay me or you would pay me as the loan club. I'll just like sacrifice and I'll just take my wage off United. And I went, went to meet Levine for the first time, and um, he just kept going on about like. Everybody here does exactly what I tell them to do. Um, you know, obviously, and there's a few folk that I know, like, away from football, that knew him. And right. that was a sort of conduit. And they've convinced me, you know, that everyone's going to be all right and this and that. So he'd obviously already had his thoughts that this is a guy who's got, like, an opinion. That's not the sort of folk I want. And then very quickly from me coming in, he just tried to, like, you know, Suppress, he's one of those. Yeah. Suppress and squash and um, dictatorial. And did you go against that straight away? Or did it wasn't, you a, case of, it wasn't a case of going against it. It was a case of like, you know, like, what are you doing? You know, like, mm. wh why are you doing that? You know? You think since Ferguson you've just got the wrong manager? Uh, not all the time. So, you know, Scotland on the 21s, Rainer Bonhoff, absolutely brilliant. Mogga, good. Yeah. Chaba Laszlo here, very good. You know, so it's not, you know, all the time. Uh, even when the Je even when Jim Jeffries came in here, it was at the tail end of when I was here and I was about to leave and we we fell out. Actually, we fell out just before I left. But that was like other things going on behind the scenes. Right. But you know these were these were decent guys that you know I, I, I got on with or would have got on with fine. Uh, what stage was it that Romanov's intrusive behaviour was having a detrimental effect on the team? Show was there? You remember a certain point you thought this is too much. Well, when I came back. You know, so I was on loan the first time I went to meet him. When I came back, it was like a different, it was like a different place completely. Aye, what, I mean, as in down? No, like in terms of, you know, the money that was being spent. You've got to remember, obviously, I said to you. Oh, when, when he first came in, he when, spent, when, huh? when I was here, the Hearts didn't have any money on loan. Then I went to meet Hibs, came back, and you know, obviously, you heard all the stories when I was away at Hibs for a few years. That, you know, Four year the, deals or not? Five the year money, deals or not? The, aye, the money that's been spent. So I came back. Obviously saw the money that was being spent. Got just, the money that was not, being spent. <laughs> not just on the players, but like all the sort of like, you know, the like the auxiliary staff and backroom things that were going on and you're like boys that players that you had, you know, um like proper players, like really good players. Who was who was who was top players then? So that when I first came back, like uh, we had a boy, the Chilean striker, Maurizio Panea, who was Absolutely different class. Problem was, he's, he's, he just wasn't there. So he was part owned by Inter Milan when he was here. Right. It was like a Chilean international. Wow. Um, Bruno Aguiar, who'd come from Remember Benfica. Him. Bruno was like brilliant as well. Um, Ibrahim Tal, French centre half. Um, and then you also had the boys that were here. So, like, the, you know, the, the team when I first came back, Larry Kingston. Good player. You had Wee Driver coming through. <laughs> Robbie was here. Christoph, first time around. Lee Wallace. Craig Wallace Gordon, was good, Craig was in goals when we yeah. first came back. Um, then um, Carapidis, 
who was a Greek centre half. Um, aye, so there was like, you know, there was proper players. Mm, the problem team. was that we didn't. Maurizio was injured all the time and didn't really have a striker. Valichka was the Lithuanian boy that then it went to Rangers eventually as well. He was, he was, he was yeah. decent. So there was a, there was a good squad. The problem was when I first came back, they didn't have a manager. Yeah, and then Laszlo came in. La- and is he as mad as people? We've had people on Ryan McGowan, guys. I, I know Gowser. I mean, look, I know Gowser <laughs> didn't. You know, Gowser was a young lad at the time, and he didn't. He didn't. He did not get on with Chaba, but Chaba was. Um, it's difficult because I, I never saw that side of him with with, with Gowser, and I know that. Uh, because I, I, I used to speak to Gowser quite a bit, even as a, he's a youngster, mm. and I know that like he was frustrated that like he didn't really think that Chaba had a fucking scooby what was going on. <laughs> but see, for like the, the the first team group of boys, he was different class. Was he in what way? He would have like a sort of subcommittee type of like five or six like the experienced boys have these in. What you know, Ask talk thoughts, about yeah. talk about what's going on. His training was like meticulous. His tactical brain. Spot on. Um, I was, we, you know, we finished third that year without a striker. Christian Nadi was the striker, and with the greatest respect to Christian, like he was not a goal scorer. Yeah, he wasn't a goal scorer. He wasn't a worker either. Not really, no. <laughs> so, Chaba developed a, a style of play, you know, and he spoke a lot even back then about like you know, it's a bit of a wanky term, but you know, like a false nine. But yeah. Chaba was think, talking about and thinking about all those things before. It actually became commonplace. Our, you know, penetration came from the the wide areas. Larry on one wing, driver on the other wing, um, and and uh, and Bruno was like the the link man. Right, you know, okay. everyone was like through Bruno. Yeah. That was how you got past the lines. Was that the best football you played? Um, well, it was one of the. I don't know. Was it the best? I'm not sure, but it was certainly one of the. You know, the, that season was enjoyable. Was yeah. play, look, you know what it's like. You play with better players, the game's easier. Mm. Uh, you were made the club captain by aye. Laszlo, 2009. Proudest moment of your career? It was certainly one of them. It was, aye. Because I think, you know, coming back, like I said to you before, it was feeling like, you know, I had an um, unfinished business. So, like, you know, getting the captaincy at that point, aye, it definitely was, it was, yeah. But, you know, and we were talking before we came on camera, who, like, you know, when you start playing football, the whole thing about, you know, the clubs that you support and things like that, when you're in the, the inner sanctum, when you're playing football, you... A lot of that doesn't matter a great deal, but um, when I got the captaincy, it's moments like that where you sort of take a step back and think to yourself, like, aye, that's aye. important. Was your family, Tarts fans, as well? Aye, yeah. They quite, Most of my mates. quite happy with that? Aye, aye. You never see one that gets too excited about it. I mean, these are big <laughs> things that to happen to people, but you just... Aye, well... No, I, aye, I do. But I didn't, like, you know... I, football's such a superficial world as well, you know? Like, aye, it's important, you know, and it's great, but... You know, there's a big world out there that, like, stuff goes on with. Uh, that's more aye. important. Uh, aye, to aye. a certain extent, aye. And in football, it could turn so quickly, and at one aye, minute you're the captain, aye. the next minute aye. you're at the door. Well, look, there's a picture over there. Who's <laughs> that? Oh, so it's Big Bear. Literally. Uh, what do you think of the situation at Hearts now? Is it, do you think Stendhal done the right thing, getting rid of Whelan and Bear? Well, look, there's two things, right? There's the decision and the process, and most folk just, like, you know, amalgamate the, the two into one. You split them apart. I don't think you can build a strong case to argue against the decision in itself mm. because it's not been good enough and things have to change, right? But the process... The way to do it. Uh-huh. It's a fucking joke. Mm. You know what I mean? Look, you play the game. You know you know what football's like. The worst thing that can happen is being told, right, off you go, right? Off you go. But Stand just, a certain way, just uh-huh. take a certain bit of respect, uh-huh. you know? Um did you see being the, the captain? Did you like that added pressure? Or? Um, aye, probably, yeah. Aye. So was no, you organise everything? No, not so much like away for the away for the park and stuff like that. I mean, you, you know, like I'm talking about like social stuff and things like that. I wouldn't be like, you know, into all that, but, you know, stuff that was needing to get done with, you know, the board or speaking to the chairman or speaking to Vlad and stuff so like that. So would you speak aye. to Roman quite a bit? Aye, it's fair, but aye, aye. Right, I, always, I always got on, you know, I always got on well with him. The thing was, it was seldom, you know, that he was here, but when he was, I, you know, I'd get on with I'd, I would, aye. Uh-huh. Uh, last question, sorry. See, when you were a captain, would you be one for speeches in dressing rooms and...? Um, a wee bit, but not like, you know, nothing fucking like, you know, over the top. Yeah. Nothing too, like... Inspirational, Al Pacino, the old Al Pacino speeches are at now. That's, that's a, wee bit, a wee bit over the top. Uh-huh. No, I, I would, like... Yeah, I wouldn't be shy from... 
The reason I'm asking this is to lead up to my next question. I think you should be a manager. Eh? You think I should be a manager? I think you should go for it. Any plans? Uh, nah, nah. I mean, there's mo- you know a lot of folk that are in- involved in football, the and their known management. They've got that itch. You know, they want to get involved in coaching and management. Uh, you know, stop playing football and you venture off down another road. It's, it wasn't by design. It's just the way it is. And I've got a good balance. I've got all the time that I can spend with my family. I'm still involved in the game without having to deal with all the, the shit that's in the midst of it, you know? The I can, politics, I can sort of, like, operate from outside a little bit. And um, if I was to get involved in, like, a, a role like that, I'd, it changes the dynamic completely. But when I hear you talk on the radio, especially about Scotland in particular, mm-hmm. you know, you're so passionate about producing better players. Mm-hmm. Why not go and do it? <laughs> Great question, isn't it? That is a good question. Again, it probably comes back to... Your lifestyle? No, not my lifestyle. It comes back to, like, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a big world out there. Football's a small part of it. I would probably be more inclined to get involved in politics than to get involved in management. Got the Prime Minister? Well, First Minister. First Minister, wow. Imagine it. There'd be any jobs for me going. <laughs> I'll clean them more. <laughs> By the way, it's been a pleasure, mate. I loved right. it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Lads, leave hitting top speed to the wingers and hit the brakes on the road. Drive smart.